can't seem to take a step out Yes, I'm in now, let's all add up to some Hello, you guys! Welcome back to Lily Reads! Okay, in today's vlog, we are going to be reading four books. So last year, I used to do like theme vlogs. Another New Year's resolution of mine on my channel is I don't want to do theme vlogs. I just want to pick four books, read four books from different genres, different years, and just see how it all goes. That's how I want my reading to be. I want my reading to be a little bit more spontaneous. Yes, I kind of already have a monthly TBR that I want books I want to read in the month, but I'll pick what four books I want to read. And so these are the four books we are going to be reading. We have Akweke Meze, The Death of Avik Oji. I wanted to read this book last year. I got this book in book of the month. And so it is my time. I am finally going to read this book. I read a book by this author two years ago. You made a fool of death with your beauty. You made a fool of, you make a fool of death, something like that. I keep getting the title in the Florence um, and Machine song mixed up. And I did not like that book at all, but let's see if this one works because I do believe that author could work for me. The next book we are going to read is Love in the Big City by Song Young Park. Heard good things about this book. This is another book I wanted to get to last year. This also was in a five star prediction video of mine. So I actually been wanting to get to this book for two years and haven't gotten to this book. But to this week is the week I will be getting to this book. The next book we will be reading is by Diana Clark, Thin Girls. I picked this book up two years ago, did not get to it, but finally I'm going to get to it. This has been on so many of my like monthly TBRs in my head. I Every month I'm like, I'm gonna read Thin Girls, I'm gonna read Thin Girls and never do. So finally, we are going to read Thin Girls. And lastly, we are gonna read if I Had Your Face, another book I picked up a couple years ago was a five-star prediction. Never got to it, but I am going to get to it. I think all three of these books were in my five-star prediction video. And then this one is just a little straggler I'm adding on. So we are going to get into it. The first book we are going to read is Thin Girls. I'm going to start this book today. And I will see you guys in the next clips. Peace. Hello, you guys. I am here to give my initial updates on Thin Girls. I have made it to page 169. I made it to page 100 last night and I was going to come talk to you, but I'm like, let me read a little bit more. Let me get a little bit of a feel of this book even more and then I'll come talk to you. So let me tell you what this book is about. In this book, we are following a main character named Rosie. Rosie is in a rehabilitation center for having anorexia. So off that trigger warning for anorexia, eating disorder, purging, all of that. Um, she is in a rehab facility for anorexia and basically they call themselves the thin girls at this facility because they are all trying to find ways to stay thin and we are following her as she's in this facility and she's talking to us and telling us the story of how she came to be in this facility as well as her past with her sister. She has a twin sister. Her name is Lily and we go into the past and we learn about her relationship with Lily. Lily has been coming to visit her at that this facility every once in a while and she finds out that her sister Lily is dating a man who is a student uh, who is a father to one of her students at school because Lily is a teacher but this man is married and this man also has these certain ideas on how he wants her to look and how he wants her to act so Rosie gets really concerned about the relationship her twin sister is having with this man and it kind of is causing issues with you know their relationship and basically at this facility a famous person starts being at the facility her name is Kat. Kat is this famous um pop star she comes into the facility and that kind of you know throws things out of whack rosie is really used to the routine and the structure of this facility but since Caddis come that structure has kind of been turned on this head 
Rosie has a boy at the facility who is in the men's side of the facility who she is having like, you know, some type of like sexual relationship as sexual as, as it can be in this facility where they can't like talk or touch each other. And she thinks this guy is going to be the love of her life. She's going to finally have someone who loves her. And something has happened that has made uh, Rosie realized she needs to get out of this facility. And that is pretty much what is happening in this book. But at the root of this, this is just about a girl who is dealing with anorexia. This book is really good. <laughs> um, Rosie as a character is so interesting. Oftentimes when you're dealing with characters who are having mental health issues, writers approach them in this infantilizing way they, tr they almost write them on the page as if they're childish or they're naive or they just don't understand the world and that's why they're dealing with these issues. But that's not Rosie and Diana Clark is doing a good job at showing that Rosie is actually really smart. Rosie is really smart. Rosie is witty. She's funny. She's all these things and she's aware of her position. She understands her mental health issues. She understands that she is kind of in a bad space. But you're dealing with this character who knows she's in a bad space and doesn't necessarily want to do anything to change it because she gets something out of being in this space. And it makes Rosie as a character really interesting to hear from because you just don't often hear about, read characters who are who are dealing with mental health issues and they're dealing with physical health issues, but they are quick with it. They're aware of it. They're sharp. They're electric. You know, they, they understand everything that's going on around them. There is no big mystery to their life. They don't, why do I feel like this? You know, she knows why she feels it. Think of my year of rest and relaxation. When you're dealing with the character and that character doesn't even fully realize that they have crippling depression. And that's why they are feeling the way they do because so much stuff has happened in their life. This character knows. <laughs> this character knows all the bad things that have been and why this character does this and why she continues to do this and what she gets out of this. We spend a lot of time in this character's head. Most of this book takes place in this character's head. And usually I don't enjoy that, but I'm enjoying it here because Rosie has such an interesting head because she's so smart. She's so clever. The word she uses to describe her anorexia, and she says this quote that is like stuck with me. She's like, anorexia is so greedy. And she's talking about all the things that have been taken away from her because she's anorexic and because she deals with having a terrible relationship with food and eating in her body. And so she's saying all the things that she's lost. And so she's fully aware of everything that she loses. And I find it really interesting. Whenever there's a time for her to confront her, um, the stuff that she's dealing with, to confront it, to deal with it, she always says, I need to prioritize my peace. Because at this facility, they keep telling her, like, prioritize your peace, prioritize your peace, and then you'll get better. And so whenever there's an obstacle in front of her or something she should, like, you know, say something about because something is weird, she's caught something that's all gorgeous, she's like, I'm prioritizing my peace. Like, ooh, maybe I should do this and it'll make me feel better. No, nope, I'm prioritizing my peace. And I just think that's such sharp commentary from Diane Clark about this idea of self-care, how we frame so many things in our life as like self-care but a lot of time it's avoidance we we are allowed to avoid things in the name of self-care we're allowed to not get better because we're taking care of ourselves you know not having healthy routines healthy patterns healthy lifestyle we allow that to happen because it's self-care i don't want to you know wash my hair today because it makes me feel bad so i'm gonna take this day as self-care but like the real care for yourself is being feeling good being clean being you know so that's a really sharp commentary from there and that's what's really interesting about this book this book is talking about how Rosie got to this situation and all the little things that lead people down this path of yes her situation is extreme but everyone she has come in contact with has almost helped her build this eating disorder they have been a part of this eating disorder and her getting better did i read this in this book or another book what's a book i read recently where she the the person was talking about how they were losing weight 
they were losing weight and they went to the doctor and the doctor was like, okay, now that's enough. You've done good. And she was talking about how even though she's taken it too far, there's this idea that when she was losing weight at dramatic levels, she was doing something good. How even when you take losing weight too far, people still commend you up into a certain point. Up into a certain point, people are just like, good job, you've lost a lot of weight. And then they're like, but I think you're losing too much. What book was this thing that this book has going for? It's this idea of wanting to be invisible. Like, we all go through these phases, I think, where we think if we make ourselves smaller, we will attract less attention to us and we will get less judgment. And so when you do that mentally, what happens when you start to do that physically? Rosie deeply wants to be like Lily. She deeply wants to be like her sister. So she's thinking to herself, if I just stop existing, if me, if I start to degrade, then maybe I can be like this person. Lily, she even says it in the book, Lily could be both of us. Like if I stop being big and if I stop growing, um, maybe she can become me. And that's this, and so this, this book is using something really extreme like anorexia to talk about this want to be invisible, this want to not live. This book also has some really good commentary on um being queer, growing up queer and how people want to get that out of you and people want to change you. And so this idea of wanting to stay the same, stay the same person that people expect you to be. And that's why she doesn't want to gain any weight because she doesn't gain any weight. She stays a specific age at all times. Oh, this book is good. Oh, this book is good. It's written so well. And I am very much so enjoying myself. So yeah, um, it doesn't surprise me that Roxane Gay was her thesis advisor because this is sharp. This is really, really sharp. This is electric. This is thoughtful. This is, it makes you think about a lot of things. The writing is so good. The writing is so good. You know, every book that I enjoy, the writing ain't all that great. The writing in here is so good. But anyways, I'm going to finish this book and come back and give you my final thoughts. Hello, you guys. I finished Thin Girls last night after I talked to you guys last. And I'm going to go ahead and give this book five out of five stars. I think this book did what it was trying to do successfully. I think this book is beautiful, beautifully written. I think it takes a topic that, you know, we kind of all know a lot about. We know a lot about eating disorders, people having unhealthy relationship with food, but it adds some nuance to it. It has interesting conversations. The characters in this is good. The plot is good. It had just enough plot for me to keep me reading this book. I was in it the entire time. I enjoyed this book. So I'm going to go ahead and give it five out of five stars. This was a book I put on my five star prediction list. So this is the first time I think I had a five star prediction and it was five stars. So thank you for us. The next book we are going to be reading in this video is The Death of Vivek Oji by Akweke Ameze. I am going to read this book on audio because the audio book for this is available in my Libby app and so I might as well pick it up on audio while I'm doing stuff. I think I want to go play The Sims and so it'll be a quick audio book because this is a very very short book. So I'm going to pick this up on audio, give you my beginning, final thoughts and then we'll move on to the next book and the next book we will go and read physically, okay? Talk to you guys later. Peace. Hello you guys. I am about to head to bed, but I did do some listening to The Death of a Vic Oji by Akwake Ameze, and I have some introductory thoughts and, and stuff like that. Well, I really don't have any thoughts, but let me tell you what this book about. So in this book, we are in a small village in Nigeria, and we are being introduced to Vavik's parents. Vavik's parents, you know, they meet each other. They have a baby. It's Vavik. Vavik has a cousin, um, and they grow to be very close. They start to learn about their sexuality, the stuff they like, you know, all of that stuff. And then rumor kind of starts going around the town that Vavik is gay. He is confronted by his cousin, and his cousin is kind of like, um, 
you being gay is not going to help you. Like it's going to bring you a lot of harm. And a lot of people, especially Vivek's parents, they worry about that too. They worry that people are going to want to bring harm to Vivek. People are going to look at Vivek a certain way because a lot of people have this idea that Vivek is gay. Well, one day, because uh, Vivek has grown his hair out, a lot of people believe that he is gay once again because the rumors have already been there. Uh, his mom sends Vivek to his aunt's house and his aunt takes him to church where they try to beat the gayness out of him. They basically say he has like a, the devil in him or a demon in him. So they try to beat it out of him. Vivek calls and it's just like, mom, why would you do this? His mother gets really upset with the aunt and it's like, well, I sent my son to you and you would have these people at the church beat me. And she gets really like upset with religion and upset with all the people around her because she's like, y'all are disgusting and weird. Um, so then one day she gets a knock, knock, knock on the door and Vivek is dead. Vivek is basically dropped off, wrapped up, dropped at her door and Vivek is dead. And so we basically are going back in time to figure out how did Vivek die? So we're getting Vivek POV, which would lead to his death. We're getting his cousin's POV as to what he knows about Vivek's death. And we're getting the mother looking for Vivek. And that is what is going on in this story. This story has mystery. The story has entry. The story has good social commentary. I am enjoying it. It's quick enough. It's quick enough. I'm halfway done with the audiobook. I do want to say... So you guys, there is a chapter, it is chapter 10, it is a Vivek chapter, and I want to read some of it to you. It goes, I felt heavy my whole life. I always thought that death would be the heaviest thing of all, but it wasn't. It really wasn't. Life was like being dragged through concrete in circles, wet and setting concrete that dried with each rotation of my unwilling body. As a child, I was light. It didn't matter too much. I slid through it and maybe it even felt like a game. Like I was just playing in mud. Like nothing about that slipperiness would ever change. Not really. But then I got bigger and it started drying on me. Eventually, I turned into an uneven block. Chipping and sparking on the hard ground. Tearing off into painful chunks. That is great writing. That is great writing. There's something so true about that feeling. That feeling of growing up. That feeling of... The entire world is just starting to weigh on you. At one point, you felt light. And even though you had problems, you almost felt like you could slip out of those problems. But now as you get older, those problems seem to settle on you. And it's hard to move. It's hard to get out of situations. When you're younger, everything feels like there is a better day. Like, oop, I'm in a bad situation, but it's temporary. As you get older, problems start to seem more cemented as this metaphor is talking about. It feels more permanent. And I just thought that was so good right there. But anyways, on that note, I'm going to finish this. I'm going to give you my final thoughts and I'll see you guys later. Peace. I am back in the exact same spot that you guys left me, which is a little uneventful. But I am here to tell you I have finished The Death of Vivek Oji by Akweka Meze. And I'm going to go ahead and give this book 3.5, leaning four stars. My favorite thing about this book is the writing. I think the writing is so beautiful. I think the premise of this book is so good. The thesis of this book is so good. The idea of this book is so good. The message of this book is so good about not feeling like yourself in your own body and wanting to change that and be and wanting to choose death if it means you can't be your true self. So many people wanting you to stay hidden. So many people wanting to keep you in the dark and you rather be dead than not be who you feel like you are and who you you rather be dead than to be who to be someone you are not. So I thought all of that was really, really good. I enjoyed this book. Um, yeah, this is way better than the other Aqueca Mezzi book I read and gave like two stars. So 3.5, four stars. I'm happy I picked it up on Book of the Month. I do not think I would have picked this up on my own. So I'm happy I picked it up in Book of the Month one month and I was able to read it because I enjoyed it. It was quick. That's what I do enjoy about Aqueca Mezzi's book. They are quick. They are to the point. You get what you're supposed to get out. And the reason why this book doesn't get more than four stars or it doesn't get the full four stars Something about their books, I feel like 
I'm like, I, I am the type of reader. I want something like that, you know, that just like packs a big punch. I want something that is more like direct. And Aqueca Amaze has this way of writing that is very flowery, very, you know, beautiful and elegant. And sometimes I can feel distant from it. I can feel like I'm not very, I'm not in the story, you know? And I think that's kind of my issue with this book. I wasn't, when I give a book four or five stars, I'm in it. I'm in it. I'm there the entire time. I'm there. I'm with the characters. My favorite narration in this book is Vivek. I thought Vivek was amazing. The narration was amazing. But everyone else I was kind of distant from. I really didn't care all that much about them. Then the main, like the cousin in this is a big part of this book. And I really didn't find anything that compelling about the cousin, except for like the secret he was keeping. So him knowing what happened to Vivek, that was really the only thing keeping me entertained during his sections of the book. So that was that. And that's just the way that I think Ameze writes. Ameze writes in this way that either you love it, it's flowery, it's amazing, it has this really big effect on you or you're like me you kind of feel distant from the store but that does not change the fact this is a very well written book I would recommend this book to people and I'm giving it 3.5 leaning four stars so to me that is a win especially after not liking a book from them before let's move on to if I had your face by Francis Cha we will talk about this in the morning okay and yeah I just got off of the Peloton, so I'm about to go take a shower. I've already made my dinner. I'm going to go eat dinner. It's fajitas night. I'm having some fajitas. Um, I have a book of the month book to show you guys. Yes, I'm doing book of the month once again this year. I can't quit book of the month. I can't quit book of the month. That's why I said they need to start paying me. Um, <laughs> book of the month has offered to pay me. I have turned down book of the month paying me because like I enjoy it. It's too like it, I, everything you enjoy don't got to be turned into income. I enjoy like picking my book in book of the month. It's a fun thing. Every single month, let's talk about book of the month. Every single month, I genuinely enjoy going into book of the month and seeing what books they have to offer and like picking out my book. It's like a fun moment for me. It feels like free books because the money has already been taken out of my account. It feels like free books. So like, it's just fun to go in there and pick a book. And then when there's not a book I'm interested in, at least I get to see like four or five books that, um, that I didn't know about <laughs> that I didn't know about it keeps me up to date on the new mysteries and the new thrillers coming out it's just I enjoy going into book of the month so like having a sponsorship with book of the month just that won't do anything for me because I enjoy being a customer of book of the month for the time being so let's I'll show you that tomorrow the book that I chose for January and I'll see you guys later peace hello you guys it is a very gloomy muggy nasty morning it is freezing um in my house and it is freezing outside <laughs> um it just I'm really weird about heat in my house I don't like sleeping with the heat on it does not matter how cold it is outside I will get hot at night so I don't sleep with the heat on and so I wake up it's like 60 degrees in my house so I have to like a rep but I have to work out in the morning. So I did Peloton this morning. So I work out in the morning and I still don't turn on the heat because I get hot when I work out. But the minute I come down and like my body goes back to its regular temperature, I realize it's freezing in my house. And so I, I try to like get it nice and warm really quickly and it never really works out. So I have my heater on, I have my heat on and I'm trying to, you know, get the house to where it needs to be. And then if I put on the heat upstairs, it gets too hot upstairs to me, I think. So I just like to turn on the heat downstairs and let the heat rise up and warm up upstairs, especially because I'm not upstairs that often. But I do think I want to play The Sims today, so I will be upstairs. It's a whole thing. Everything, this is the stuff that takes up my day. But anyways, we need to come and discuss if I had your face. So we are being dropped into Korea and we are following a group of girls who all live in Korea, a group of young girls who all live in Korea and are dealing with image issues, image issues, beauty issues, um, and wanting to be seen as desirable in some way. They all have something that they want or something that they're missing and they want 
the, they want that thing and they believe beauty will give them what they want. So we are following, how many girls are we following? I'm gonna go through and tell you what each girl's plight is. So we got our first girl, we got Ara. Ara does not have a voice, something happened with her and she lost her voice. And she works at a, um, she works at a beauty salon. I believe that is her truth. Let's move on to our next girl. Our next girl is Kayuri. Kayuri works at a um, room salon, which is important. That's kind of the overarching thing about this, these room salons. So these room salons in Korea, there are these places where um, rich men go to like hang out with pretty young women. Sometimes they sleep with the women. Sometimes they just want the company of the women. But the more official the room salon is, so the more expensive men or rich men who come in, the prettier the girls have to look. So we have Kyuri. Kyuri, I'm, I'm sorry if I'm butchering name. She is in the like 10% 10, 10 of prettiest girls in Korea. So she's dealing with that, living in the room salon, and she's gotten all the plastic surgery done to her face in order to be 10th prettiest girl. Then you get Wona, Wona, Wona. Wona um, lived with her grandmother her entire life. And her grandmother was like her first bully. Her grandmother used to say awful, terrible things to her. Her mother is nowhere to be found. And her dad moved to South America and started a new family. Well, he got a new wife. And so she's dealing with stuff. I don't want to spoil anyone's story. So that, those, those are three girls right there. Who else is in this book? We have Miho. Miho is in, she's from Korea, obviously, but she moved to New York City to go to school. She fell in with the rich Korean crowd. She became an artist and she lives with Kayuri, their roommates, their roommates, okay? Their roommates. She lives with Kayuri, their roommates. And they be doing stuff. And so basically she's an artist and she has her own story. Everybody has their own story. And you're following their stories from like their chapters. And other girls do get introduced in different cap, uh, chapters. So then you have like an Aura chapter. Remember Aura is the first girl that we met. So you go back to some people's chapters when need be. So we got another Kayuri chapter in my reading. And I think that's what I ended on. Now there are two girls that are in the story, but we haven't got chapters. One I think is Sujin. She, Sujin is Ara's roommate and she's friends with Kayuri. Then we have this other girl. We got this other girl. Hold up. This isn't as confusing as I'm making it. I promise you. I promise you. I'm just making it 10 times more confusing than it has to be. I am. We have this other girl who, um, who is friends with Kayuri and she's in the story too. She works at the room salons too. She's in the story as well. So there's some other girls. I say all that to say, this is a story about a bunch of girls living in Korea, all of them trying to find uh, some type of peace in this world, their place in this world, and they believe beauty will be the thing that will give them that. They're trying to figure out what their relationship to beauty is, money is, family is, relationships with men is, all of that stuff. I say this to say, this book is really enjoyable, like so enjoyable. Every time I get into a new story, I am just fully in it, like fully in it. Like I never, I don't want them to end. Most of them, when they're going on, I want them to go on longer and longer and longer. Um, there's this idea really of getting to know all of these girls. One girl wants what the other girl has because they're not aware of what happens 
when you have the things that other that that you desire you know it's really good it's really sharp it's really easy to read the characters are really good you really feel like you're a part of this world and even though this book doesn't give you like facts about this world just hearing what these women are talking about hearing what these women find interesting you're able to understand this world and you understand why these women make the decisions that they make. And it's a book about desirability at the end of the day. Desirability, desirability and pretty politics. So I am enjoying this book and I will finish it today, I know, and I will come and give you my final thoughts on it. So yeah, we're following all them girls and what they got going on. Um, book of the month, book, book of the month, book, book of the month. Let me show you the book of the month book that I bought. This, it might shock you guys that I chose this book of the month book. It shocked me. I'm still looking at this like why. I have a rule, unless I really want to read a thriller, I don't get thrillers in book of the month because I can probably get those on discount somewhere. And yeah, I really wasn't moved by anything else. And so this one, though I don't love the cover, do any of y'all feel like the dust jackets on book of the month books are kind of like ba bad. I don't, and then do y'all ever feel like these get stains on them too easy? Maybe I'm just greasy and messy. I do not like the dust jackets on book of the month books. Something about them always feel a little flimsy to me. A little, I don't know, a little low quality. No, I'm making that up. I don't know. But I got interesting facts about space by Emily Austin. I have seen one of two, one or two of you on Goodreads has either said you wanted to read this book or you've already read this book. Um, it's about a girl who's obsessed with space. She has an estranged half sister. Her daddy dead. Then she gets into a romantic entanglement, and then she thinks someone is following her. That's what got me. Her thinking someone is following her. I was like, let me see how it goes. So this is my January book of the month pick. As you can tell by this video, I do read my book of the month picks, unlike some people. <laughs> some people like get book of the month books and then don't ever read book of the month books. I genuinely do read the books that I get from book of the month because I'm like, why buy them? Why buy them? And y'all know Book of the month alone is worth it for these damn bookmarks. These damn bookmarks keep me alive. They changed them this year. I don't think before, were they blue on the front? I don't think they were blue on the front. I don't think they were. But yeah, that's that. So I just stick it right in here. And when it is time for me to read this book, I'll probably read it for a vlog with you guys this year. I will read it. But anyways, if I had your face, I'm going to finish it. Sorry, it was kind of confusing me going from girl to girl to girl. But just know those are the girl. The, oh, of all the, the most interesting one is the girl who doesn't speak. The girl who doesn't speak has the most interesting um POV to follow. But everyone's POV is just as interesting to me. It's just ours is like really, really interesting. You know, they're all interesting though. Anyways, I'm going to talk to you guys. Like I'm, I'm low energy. Not as low energy as I was on Tuesday. I don't even know if I talked to you guys on Tuesday. Today's Friday, by the way. I don't even know if I talked to you guys on Tuesday because I was so low. No, Wednesday. Wednesday. Sorry, not Wednesday. Tu not Tuesday. Wednesday. Wednesday, I was so low energy on Wednesday. I don't know what happened to me on Wednesday. I took a nap. I have not taken a nap in so long during the day. I took a nap for like four hours and I don't even know why. It's not like I don't go to bed at a good time. I go to bed at a good time and y'all know I don't wake up early. But yeah, I was so low. And this has just been a really low energy week for me. And today is no different. It's just hard for me to get on into it. But I'm going to cut me up some fruit. And I'm probably going to read a little bit. Maybe try to knock out an hour of reading. It'll probably take me an hour and a half to finish this book. So maybe just knock out an hour, do the last 30 tonight. We'll see. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace. Hello, you guys. I am here to give my final thoughts on If I Had Your Face by Frances Cha. I'm going to go ahead and give this book 
five out of five stars. The second half of this book was better than the first half of this book. In the second half of this book, we get more in the lives of these women. And I think each woman, I know, each woman, woman kind of get kind of gets a specific storyline. So we start to follow them in a specific storyline. They all get their own like narrative that we are following. So I would say in the first half, we're kind of dealing with their feelings, how they feel about their situation. And in the second half of the book, you actually get like the story, like these women going through a story that you can follow and you know them having like something, there's a goal that they're trying to accomplish. You know, you get more into their life about a specific thing, a specific topic. And that's what's happening in the second half of the book. And it just gets so juicy. These women's lives are so juicy and so scandalous. And this is a culture that I don't know anything about, but I want to know more. And it just becomes so good and how all of these stories come together. And you guys know, I am always going to love a book where at the end, it is about women coming together and saving each other. It always gets me. And that's what this book gives. I love my girls. I love all of my girls in this book. And so I'm going to give this book five out of five stars. I want a sequel. I want a sequel. I want, now this book is, I have a, I have a decision to make. Because I give this book five stars, this is an arc. And I'm like, should I get a finished copy? Should I get a finished copy? Or should I just accept the fact I read the arc? That's my, like, it's, it's torn on this side, but it's like, doesn't matter. Does it matter? It's just going to sit on my bookshelf till five, ten years from now, I decide to reread it. But I enjoy the hell out of this book. So maybe if I can get it cheap somewhere, I might get a finished copy. I don't know. But five out of five stars, which means, you guys, Thin Girls, I gave five out of five stars. The Death of Vivek OG, I gave 3.54 stars. This I gave five stars. Can we get our winners? Can we get our winners? I believe that we can because we have love in the big city. And this was another five-star prediction from me. This was also a five-star prediction and it lived up to it. Thin Girls was also a five-star prediction and it lived up to it. So I did really good in that five-star prediction video, if you remember. And so we have love in the big city. I'm excited to get into the into this this is the last book of the video and let's see how it goes friends let's see how it goes um i just came back well i came back i had dinner with my man then i came home finished the book now i'm about to go take a shower read maybe a little bit of this a little bit of this and then i'm going to watch a movie i think i watched a movie earlier so now I'm in like a movie groove so I think I'm gonna watch a movie tonight and then I'm gonna call it but I am gonna read some of this and then hopefully not hopefully I know tomorrow I will come give you some initial thoughts because I would like to finish it tomorrow tomorrow Saturday and this vlog will be coming to you guys on a Sunday because that's how weekly vlogs work so yeah I've enjoyed this week of reading I have I will see you guys a little later peace Hello, you guys. I'm here to give initial updates on Love in the Big City. I literally am almost done with this book and I totally forgot. I have to come give you guys updates every now and then. I forget like what I do for a living and what is talk to you guys about books. But before I finish, I want to tell you about what this book is about, my initial thoughts on it, and then I'll finish the book. And then I'll tell you my final thoughts about it. So Love in the Big City is a Korean translated novel. This is a debut novel by Sang Young Park. And in this book, we are following a character named Young. He lives in Seoul, Korea, and he is a writer. He is actually kind of, kind of a successful writer. If success means less money and more acclaim, he has won many like writer's awards and all of that stuff, but like nothing else in his life is going that well he does not come from money which if you read other Korean novels then you know we just read a novel that took place in Korea like coming from money is like a huge deal it's really your best chance of like upward mobility they talk about in this book running into land like somebody leaving you land who you didn't know you know so like upward mobility pretty much just comes from like 
marrying well or just finding out you have a rich relative. You know, that's really how you are able to do that. And then, of course, you can get a good job, go to one of the good universities and all that type of stuff. But anyway, Young don't got none of that. Young does not have any of that. And so basically, he is a student when we meet him. And basically, everyone at his school kind of has like no respect for him. Really, they make jokes about him being gay, not in like a malicious way, but in a just like, let's make jokes about you being gay type of way. Uh, people think he's an alcoholic um, and all that stuff. So he meets one friend. Her name is Jay He. Jay He um, is also a student, I think. But they're best friends. They become roommates. They get close. They get to talking about their like relationship. They both kind of have the same relationship issues. They both have the same alcoholism issues and they become friends. One day Jay, he gets married. And so young is off on his own. He gets into a relationship with a man who seems to have no respect for him just at a base level. He's always talking shit about people and the people he's talking shit about is people like young. So he goes with that. And then, so he goes out and finds love again. That's pretty much what this book is about. I can't really tell you one thing with this book about you are just following young as he lives in so has an alcohol problem and his mama is dying that's pretty much what it is and you're following him from relationship from friendship from job to this to this to this and it's just about his life how do I feel about this book I love a good main character I love a good main character I like a main character that's funny that's witty that gives me like a new perspective to see life and that is young young is so vibrant my word for 2024 is electric Electric is my word of 2024 and young is electric young on the page just reads so well so witty It's just it's good. It's good. It's a really good book. It's very quick Like I said, there is no main plot. There is no main plot. You are just following young as you know, he's in the nightlife. He gets drunk. He sleeps with people He wakes up the next morning and it's just like who was I the night before? And in between that, the, the the moments of levity is him having to take care of his sick mother. And yeah, some stuff has happened. I can't tell you some stuff that has happened because I don't want to spoil anything. But yeah, that's pretty much what about. This book is about being young in Korea. But the thing is, what makes this book really good is that like it's not unique to Korea. Um, this character could be in the middle of New York City, could be in the middle of San Francisco, could be in the middle of Atlanta, could be in the middle of Chicago. Like this character just is really worldly. That's not the word I'm looking for, but you know, it's, he's easy to like see anywhere. It's not just a unique story to green. That's what makes this so good. Like it's just so you want to, you want to be in the world if you know what I'm saying. And it's easy to read. And it's also short. This book is not even 250 pages. So you should go pick it up already, but I am going to finish it. I'm going to give you my final thoughts and yeah, I think we're shaping up for another, another good review. But yeah, actually, I want to talk to you guys. Have you guys felt like there's no good new releases this year? I have been looking for books to buy. I know that sounds crazy, like you looking for books to buy. But like, I've been looking for things to look forward to, like books to be on my radar. Last year, I had a lot of books that were on my radar. I was just like, yeah, when that book comes out, I'm going to get it. I was looking forward to going to the bookstores on certain weeks because I knew a book I like was coming out, but I was scrolling Goodreads just to see some of the books that they were showing that were coming out. And I wasn't gagged by nothing. I am not gagged by anything. If it's not going to be in my book club, I'm not interested in it. Is this an off year for people? Is 2024 an off year for people? A lot of people aren't publishing books this year. Like obviously you have your, it's really your romance girlies who are giving you books every single year. So they're back, but like, why ain't all your hair book coming back? Why ain't all your hair book coming back? There's just certain people who I, where's Tiffany D. Jackson at? Julia Goffney's not coming back this year. Um, there's so many people who I'm just like, where are my girls? Where are my girls? Where are my people who like, where are they? Where are they? Eve, so I've just been looking. I'm just like, even I watch people's videos of books they're anticipating. I'm like, bored, bored. Like none of these books seem that interesting, you know? And even the ones that are coming out from P, I'm just like, this all you had? This all you could come up with? So I just feel like 2024 is going to be a sleepy year of new releases, but... 
positivity, I think that a lot that allows for possibility. I think because there's not going to be a lot of new releases from big name people that I like, there allows this possibility of a lot of like new authors to break through. I think a lot of people as we get towards spring and summer are just going to be looking, looking for some type of book to like revive them, something good, something new, something good. And so I feel like a lot of authors who have either been pushed to the side or debut authors are going to get their shine in 2024. That's what I am excited about. I'm curious to see what new genres are going to be in this year. Like we had the huge romanticy, like, you know, bomb of last year. You know, everybody was just like romanticy, romanticy, romanticy. The year before, I would say we had the big romance boom. Um, I'm curious what's going to be the big boom this year. I don't know. Maybe we just go even heavier on romanticy. We go even heavier on romanticy. If I, if I could see into the future for myself, I think at some point this year, I need to have a science fiction era. I have been in my young adult era for like two years now. Two years now, I've been in my young adult era. And so I either want to go full on getting into my middle grade era. So I just want to go even lower and get into my middle grade era and really explore what middle grade has to offer like I did with young adult. And I'm going to still continue my young adult era. That's just a part of me now. Or I might see if I can have a science fiction era. I might see if I can have a science fiction era. Because the thing is, romance at this point is almost completely out of my reading cycle. I do not... I, there used to be a time where I used to read a romance book a week. And as you can see by the last two vlogs, where the romance at? Where the romance at? Now... When Valentine's Day comes and it's Black History Month, I am going to reach for some of my Black romance books. That's going to be a thing that happens. But I'm not reaching towards romance. I'm not buying new romance. So, and then last year also, I went out of my way to have a thriller era. I could have done more. I could have leaned into the thriller era more, I think. I don't know. So maybe that's what I should do. Instead of maybe... I have so many thriller books, though. That's the issue. I have so many thriller books on my bookshelf. And so maybe that's what I should do. Instead of trying to, like, get into a science fiction era, I should read the thrillers on my bookshelf and clean that bookshelf out. That's really what I should do. I should clean that bookshelf out. I don't know. I've been having this really hard time with thrillers lately where the beginning has been really hard for me in thrillers. I don't know why it took me so long to say that. The beginning has been really hard for me in thrillers. I'll be reading, I'll start a thriller and like it's hard for me to get past the beginning and I'll DNF. I've DNF'd so many thrillers in the past like three months, which is not something, I'm not a huge DNF girl. Like if I start a book, I'll try to finish it. But I DNF so many thrillers because I have so many and I'm like, there's no point for me to read a thriller. I'm not into, then if I pick up the audiobook of a thriller, I end up, my mind ends up going to a whole other place. And so I'm like, okay, DNF that too. So maybe that's what I should focus on. Instead of having a science fiction era, maybe I should have my thriller era on my bookshelf. Have a thriller era on my bookshelf. Anyways, I kind of need to find time to go to the library today. Why am I ranting to you guys? Um, so I went to the library about a week ago. About a week ago. And I turned in my books. I gave back all my books that I had out at the library that were due. Then I get an email saying, you have an overdue book. I said, what the hell is you talking about? Baby, I left one book under the seat of my car. Left one book under the seat of my car. So now I just hate, I'm a completionist. At heart, I am a completionist. I do not like, you know how some people will start something and then they'll be like, ooh, at least I started. And then they'll slowly chip away at something. That is not me. It's the reason why when I read, 
I like to like one or two days is, as, is the most I like to spend on a book three tops because I just do not like things dangling. And so I wanted to turn in all of my books. So the fact that like half my books been turned in, then I got the one under my seat, it bothers me. It bothers me in a way that it shouldn't because I feel like I waste my time. If I don't complete something, I feel like I completely wasted my time. It bothers me so much. It's like cleaning the kitchen and not sweeping the floor. Like that bothers me, like coming back to do something. I just feel like people waste their time when they do that. And the thing is, I, they're not wasting their time in actuality. Like it's, not, it's gonna get done, but to me, it's a waste of time. It's a waste of time to start doing something, then be like, okay, I've done a little, let me go do something else. When you could have just finished that whole task, had that checked off done, and then did whatever the hell you was doing. I'm a completionist in that way so having that book bothers me so i'm gonna go do that today but i'm gonna do that it gets really busy in my city on the weekends which i'm sure is everybody's city so i'm actually gonna wait to do that a little bit later but anyways i'll talk to you guys later peace hello you guys i need to come and give my final thoughts on love in the big city i'm going to go ahead and give this book four out of five stars. I really, really enjoyed this book. I enjoyed this main character. One of the most interesting and compelling main characters I've read in a really long time. You guys, I know I love characters, but also sometimes you get strong characters and they're not really doing much in the book. That's not necessarily this book. No, this book does not have an actual plot, like a linear plot that you can follow. But the message of this story, this idea of seeking out love, wanting someone to love you unconditionally and not trying to be a burden to other people, but still just wanting someone to understand you, I just think is the plot of this story. You're following this character as he's trying to find someone who will just care about him, who will just love him and who will give him what he desires without having to tell them that because he doesn't want to be seen as a burden. And that's what I enjoy. What I also enjoy the most, the root of this is kind of a love story, kind of a love story. I like this idea of it not being flowery. It was really organic and it was really raw, this relationship that these two characters had. And that's what I liked. I like it being a mundane relationship and him wanting the mundane, him wanting the regular type of stuff. And this, um, not knowing if you should hold your partner back because you like them and want them to be with you, or if you should want them to do whatever you want to do, you know, choosing when it's time to put you guys' love ahead of, you know, you guys maybe career success or stuff like that. I thought that was really interesting in this book. That's why I said it added to like a rawness of it. It wasn't this like flowery us against the world. We can overcome anything. That wasn't this book. Um, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it a lot. So I'm going to go ahead and give it four out of five stars. I'm happy that I picked it up. And I think we can go on to call this vlog a winner blog. The first book we read was Thin Girls. I really enjoyed Thin Girls. Thin Girls is one of the best written books that I definitely read this year, obviously. And even in a while, five out of five stars. You should pick this book up if you can handle the heavy subject matter. Then we read The Death of Avik Oji. I read this on audio and I enjoyed this book. This was really a redemption for Kweka Meze for me because I did not like the book I read from them before, but I like this book. I like what this book represented. This book, once again, was really well written. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Enjoyed it a lot. If I had your face, I don't know between this and Thin Girls, I don't know which one I like the most. I would have to really sit and think about it. Really enjoyed this book as well. Five out of five stars. I enjoy the narrative structure of this. You guys know I love when people play with narrative structures and people tell stories in ways that you don't really expect. That's what keeps me excited. That's what keeps me wanting to flip the page. And that was this book. So I'm going to go ahead and give this book five out of five stars. Also, another well-written book. I also didn't talk about how well-written this book is. This book has so many quotes that you can take out. There's so many quotes about wanting to be desired. So many quotes about love and life. This book is also really, really well-written. I think I said this was a debut 
author, that's not true. This is this author's second published book. I read the acknowledgement. Um, I am going to give this book four out of five stars. So altogether, I am happy that I chose these books because it, it, it was time to read some good literature. It was time to read some good literature, some books that are well written, especially after the flop we had last week. Oh my God. So I would recommend all these books to you. I think you should pick up these books and I will see you guys next week for another reading vlog.